spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about the evolution of grips. Now, back in the day, when I was a little kid, I used to play with something like this. This was one of my first rackets. Well, not this one. This one's probably from the 20s or something. I, I'm not 100% sure when this is from. I'm going to bring it in close so you can see the markings. But I played with a wooden racket uh, when I was a kid. So um, back in that day, when we were shopping for rackets, it was either on the shelf a four and a half grip, four and five eighths grip, or four and three quarters grip. So it was thick, thicker, or thickest. So it was very thick in this handle. There was no such thing when I was a five-year-old as a kid's racket, unless my dad wanted to cut this down with a saw, or I had to live with, let's say, a four and five-eighths, uh, or a four and a half that they had at the store. Uh, we didn't even know. We just randomly grabbed something for me, and I started hitting with it. So it was probably this size, 27 inches. How did we play? What has changed? Well, back in those days, do you remember? Probably some of you guys are too young. So how I was taught was you shake hands with the racket. So rackets like this, right? And you put your palm and you shake hands with it, right? You shake hands with it like this. Hi, how are you racket? You shaking hands with it. That is your forehand grip. And that's probably your backhand grip. That's your serve grip. That's your volley grip. It was kind of a one grip tennis racket. Okay? You pretty much just glued your hand to this grip. That was it. So, you see the V here with the bevels where I am? Right? I'm shaking hands with the racket. Right? So, imagine having to hit a forehand, right? Like you can't hit it with an open stance. So you got to turn and hit it like that, right? Pretty much at your instep, right? You got to hit it like that because your full palm is behind the racket, right? So you're hitting it like that, which, but you have to think about this. This head is so small that you pretty much have a super small sweet spot. So you kind of have to hit it solidly flushed and flat most of the time. So that's why they kept the ball low then because you couldn't hold it with a Western grip and try to hit it like this. You'd be framing it all over the place. I mean, unless you were really that good. So you held it like that, you hit it like that, and as they told me, grip it and rip it. So you just kind of, right? You just kind of swung right through it. So what that does is it gives you a nice low flat trajectory, barely over the net, and then it comes down because you're pretty much hitting it square. I mean, as time developed, people started, you know, low to high. That's where that came from, low to high. So that gave it a little more spin, gave it a little more shape. But again, you're playing with this frame, so small, right? Actually, I'm gonna, I wanna weigh this later on. But So the evolution of the game came when the technology changed. So when, when metal came with the T2000s, that didn't help a whole lot. The main thing that changed was graphite. When graphite, came uh, pro staffs prince graphites that started changing the game a little bit the frame became stiffer it was easier to shape the ball it was easier to spin the ball the heads got bigger right so you suddenly have a stiffer racket and a bigger racket so it's easier to start turning the the, the grip over so instead of having to shake hands with it and hit it flat all the time, it started moving that way. So semi-Western to full Western, right? So as you saw in the 80s into the 90s, people started, you know, hitting like that with more of an open stance, 
coming through the ball more because the racket was more powerful. So you needed to do this to bring the ball down. Now, what that means is you had to be a little more physical. You had to be in better shape because the ball is coming faster. You got to get there faster. So rallies became probably longer because now instead of trying to shape a point coming in and putting it away with this wooden racket, I'm now trying to duke it out with you because of this. Because I'm, I'm topping it, it's coming down, I'm running it down, so I'm basically having a longer rally with you because of technology. Okay, so with a bigger racket again, I'm coming through, right? So now with newer technology, I'm able to swipe around. Now with a bigger grip, that's impeding me from releasing my wrist and causing more spin. So what do I do? I get a smaller grip, right? So you hear of Nadal taking a four and a quarter grip, ta taking the uh, replacement grip off and putting on two over grips. He wants to feel the bevels, right? The way he swings straight up like this, right? You can't do that when your racket grip is that big, okay, right? It's gonna be hard to turn that thing over and, and let that wrist come through if it's like that, that big of a grip, like a baseball bat. The smaller grip allows you to turn it over easily, right? So more spin, more top. So what, what else does it benefit? What else does it benefit? Well, your serve, right? If you got a small grip, it's going to be way easier to let it go, right? Serve, forehand like that, right? Like think of, like Fed uses a 3 8 grip, right? Fed does that deal, right? Right? The only thing that a small grip makes, makes worse for, or the only thing that a small grip um, is bad for, is I personally, I think a, a volley because you know, sometimes I'm reaching for that volley and it's like the smaller grip is like, where's that bevel? I'm trying to feel for a bevel here to get that perfect forehand grip. When it's smaller, I can't feel for it. When it's bigger, it's more stable in my hand going both ways, right? So in the modern game, it's much better with a smaller grip if you've adapted to the grips. If you've adapted to the Western grip on both sides and you want that, you know, that, that, that serve that, you know, you, you let your wrist go on, um, harder flat serve. So, but I want to check a couple things out. I'm going to weigh this wooden racket out and weigh this right. I'm going to take this placard off and see what the differences are. I'm going to show you, uh, this thing, how much this you used to have to carry around versus today at the scale guys. So that is a Blade 98, 1619, current model, V7. Three ten. That's on on point on dot. Three hundred and ten grams. Okay, the wood in racket. Three hundred. 55 grams and these are unstrung weights so this is probably about 370 a little over 370 uh, when it's strung so that's a lot of racket right there it's solid wood too all right so we'll swing weight this thing Two ninety-seven on the swing weight. Wooden racket. Jesus, look at this. I can't even barely get it through here because it's so thick. Two 
$2.99. What? So, solid wood through here. That's probably where most of that weight is. And headlight because look at how thin that is and how small that is. So that part is shocking to me. So that that means this balance point should be real close. Okay, guys, I know you guys want me to tell you in millimeters about um, this, and I will put it up in millimeters in in uh, writing here because this, for some reason, and I'm waiting for my balance board. I ordered a balance board for you guys, so it's on its way in. Um, but this machine only tells me in inches and centimeters, so I'll give it to you in those. Okay, so it balances out at 12 and a half inches. Let's take the wooden racket. Wow, that's at 31 centimeters which is going to be 12 and a quarter inches. So what does this tell me? So there's more weight here for sure. So this is actually pretty headlight too, as we just saw. But this being you know, solid pretty much all the way through this racket with a smaller head it's a lot harder to play with I mean try I would love for the modern player to play with one of these and see how like both players let's say in a singles match just and see how it would go uh, tennis elbow broken arm I don't know any of those could definitely happen because this ain't easy to play with so in closing um, the evolution of the smaller grip is due to technology. So they're more powerful, they're lighter, they're faster in the head rackets, uh, causing us to basically swipe through the ball to bring the ball down. So if you haven't tried it, if you're still shaking hands with the racket, if you're using one of these rackets, Try one of these. You will definitely benefit from it, okay? T try turning that forehand over or turning that backhand over. Uh, maybe opening up that stance and ripping through it and seeing what happens. I'm sure most of you already do it. There's nothing you don't know. Uh, thanks for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.